<clears throat> going live in three, two. <laughs> yeah, and we we are live. All right. Okay, so what's up, Jesus? How's it going, Cass? How are you doing? Oh my God, you know how I'm doing. <laughs> you know, you know how I'm doing. <laughs> <sighs> we've been like, evolving so much every day oh my god like yeah. learning so much we've been uh, refractal and rechange re reprogrammed like every day yeah we've been we've been reprogramming everything and we share the experiences that we're going through and we give perspective on on those um you know experiences and then when we have that that feedback it allows us to grow and we're not repressing anything we're not saying suck it up cupcake you know right right <laughs> it's just raw like the truth mm -hmm. and and i think because we see that then we allow it to come in and then we can reprogram and because we're meditating so much we're mm -hmm. in that mind frame where we want to feel better yeah right and not suppress anything right so we're not cookie like sugar coating anything and i think that's why we've been evolving like so fast and growing so much learning oh. so much so you think that it all boils down to that one little hack no, or I, little aspect? <laughs> <laughs> if it boils down to that, I mean, I don't know if it boils down to just one thing, but but would you say it's part of it? Would you say that was like a key point in your life, the key, it, key turning point in your life? That after that, it, nothing is going to go back to normal again. Oh, like what we've been going through? Yeah. Oh man, like it definitely restructured my view of reality. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so you literally live in a different reality because of it. I live in a different world now where I'm not, you know, going to pretend that I'm a victim. I'm not going to feel sorry for the stuff that's happening to me. Yeah. Because if I don't do anything about it, then I'm, you know, I'm a part of that too. Mm -hmm. I'm causing my own misery. Right. By just staying there and hoping and, you know, the law of attraction, it, like you can't just call stuff you have to perform a certain action on it right right it's very easy to wish for stuff like oh i want this in my life uh, i wish i was in croatia or i wish i, I wish i was in bali and and that stuff that you know it just doesn't land on your lap right. unless you really think about it you know you meditate on it it could be while playing a sport while swimming or while you're actually sitting there and, and visualizing this stuff but you you feel what it is that you need to do in order to get closer to that. So then that's where the action comes in, right? Because you're thinking about performing the action so that you can get to Bali, right? You're going to Bali. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I am. I am I'm very likely going to Bali very soon. And, and you're not just wishing that. You're visualizing everything. Right. You have a plan. Yeah. And you're thinking about that constantly. And it's gonna, going to happen. Right. But if you were not thinking about it and you said, I want to go to Bali and then you just didn't think about it, you think it's going to come to you? Right. No. So that's what people think is law of attraction. If I just watch videos and if I just, you know, read a book and just wish for stuff, it's supposed to fall in my lap, uh -huh. but it doesn't work that way. Okay. So, so tell me then <clears throat> that's, well, define to us the law of, uh, excuse me, the law of attraction in uh, human terms. In human terms? Yeah, in human terms, if you will. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> human terms uh, as like how people know of it or practice it or what I think for me, what it means for me. Um, yeah, well, what you just newly discovered, what you just uh, were talking <clears throat> about, about yeah. about uh, law of attraction, right? Yeah, I mean, what's... So what does it mean to you? You said like it's not what people think. So it's, can it's, you describe yeah. to us what what is it? It's not wishing, it's dreaming. You have to dream okay. about it. Okay. You know, you have to feel it and see if that path is for you or if it's not. Okay, like, so so all right, so so just let me get this straight. Um so I dream about it. Mhm. Mm and then check it out is is it vibing with me or not? How yeah. how good do I feel thinking about it and dreaming about it? Exactly. Okay, so and if I feel really good with that dream and okay this this is something is worth dreaming oh, for oh i just got it like a and like a light bulb moment oh yeah from something that thomas campbell shared oh yeah go ahead when i told him i w i had this you know i was meditating and i was like not out of body but i was meditating thinking about this stuff uh -huh. and i 
I saw Egypt. I was outside, you know, watching the pyramids and I could feel the heat and I could see like the blur in the sky. Mm -hmm. And then <clears throat> after we finished the binaural beat, the meditation, we came back, had the Q&A and I asked the question, okay, Tom, how do I know when it's not just my own ego that's getting in the way, my own intellect that's right. just imagining this stuff or when it's actually intuition and something else you know, I'm connected to something else that's showing me something. Right. That's one of the big questions actually to ask is how do I know if this was a thought coming from my intellect and ego or was it the intuition uh, that actually that I should follow and go with? Right. That was a big question throughout the whole big thing. Question, right? And his answer to that was just explore it, engage in it. Right. And you'll quickly find out that if you... If the dream stops, if the thought stops, then you know that that was just your ego playing a game and it's not your intuition. And that's how you know if it's your path or not. So if you're wishing for stuff like I want to go to Bali, but you're not even thinking about it, dreaming about it, you probably you don't want it. You don't desire it that much. Right, right. And that's how you can distinguish yeah. whether or not the law of attraction is at play or not. Right. You know? <laughs> Okay, and that's what the law of attraction is. You engage with with oh, the stuff so you're discovering that you want. because it's already there. Yeah, the, but, the, the, so the, the stuff the, is oh, there. Oh, that's oh, that's that's the uh, point of least resistance. It's yeah. the traveling and point of least least resistance, and that's what it is. Yeah, the point of least resistance because it feels like it's part of your path. Yeah, and you know that you can feel it. Yeah. <laughs> I can totally understand what you're saying. Yeah. Like I understand what you're saying exactly. And it's like the the biggest uh trick about it all is that when you feel it you think oh my god like I'm cheating in life. Like it feels a bit like cheating. It feels a bit like cheating because it's a bit of a game, but it's a bit of a game. And, uh, of course and it's know. not it's not cheating. It's that's exactly how we supposed to have <laughs> um, um what kind of world view we should have. But yet at first you f the the problem about that is that Oh, maybe I just don't deserve it. it can't, world can be just like so awesome like that. That's there's no way that, that I can be that awesome. And <laughs> <laughs> you know, it it feels that awesome because we've just unlocked something new, right? You know, like we've put on a whole new persona to us, yeah. And we're just like unlocking the levels of the game, recognizing that they exist, and we created it too, right? Other people think it's a game too. So if right. it is a game. Now, you know, it manifested into our right. existence. So let's talk about uh, <clears throat> simulation theory and virtual reality theory and that we are in the video game. So how would you describe it? What would you base it on? Like, what do you think that is? Like, what is the fundamental uh, structure of that? That's a <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Loaded question. <laughs> the fundamental structure. I mean, we're all mathematical code, right? Okay, so we know that, right? So we're math we, and we code. Okay, we know that. I think that's pretty big to swallow. Okay, for a that's lot pretty of big to swallow. <laughs> but okay, that, I totally agree with that. That's the mm. step number one that yeah. you have to understand that you, that you you are a AI that you think that we're going to develop that we already are that. Yes, that we already are. And we an we AI. we just think about it as like oh, there's something AI, something that's very intellectual, and I mean, sorry, not intellectual, but. You know, so much smarter than the the rest of the population. Right. We like think of something. AI as something robotic right. with no emotion that has a pure intellect. And yeah. it only exists because we created the software for it. Yeah. But it doesn't have emotion. But it, That's what we think. And what, what you were saying, the realization that we are that already, that we are mathematical digital code, that we are digital consciousness. Right. And that's the first part. A pill to swallow meaning that the, we are code the, <laughs> the stuff that we're pill. going to develop ai you know is we're gonna we're gonna clearly see how that's going to be made out of the code and that will make us realize oh my god we are the code reproducing itself yeah we are the code reproducing itself okay we should evolving talk, and <clears throat> reproducing i think itself. we should talk a little bit about sacred geometry that way people know like okay. why we're saying it's mathematical code okay okay so we have uh, this concept that consciousness was just like one cell, right? Mm -hmm. And expanded into two. And that's where duality comes from. Mm -hmm. So it's split like a cell because consciousness wanted to expand. 
you right. know, for reasons I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, it kept expanding and, and it formed this pattern, which we call the seed of life. Yeah. <clears throat> and this pattern is seen everywhere in the universe. You can see it in flowers and you could probably see it in some structures in your own body, mm -hmm. perhaps. I yep. don't know. But it's seen everywhere. So we know that we keep fractaling mathematically this way in the universe. Mm -hmm. It's always observed. So we have to be a fractal of that. If we belong to consciousness, to unity, right. that's what we are at our core. Code. Okay. And, and when so you one have split into, z into uh, uh, zero and one, which became obviously duality. Zero mm -hmm. and one is the basis of duality and the basis of any code. Exactly. You know, that's a little hint right there. Yeah. And uh, masculine, feminine, you know, positive, negative, all these energies are part of that. Yes. And this is fundamentally observable every second of our lives. Mm -hmm. The balance is observable every second of our lives. Yeah. We always see masculine, feminine. We know what's masculine, what's feminine. We know what's yin and yang. We know, you know, what's on, what's off. Exactly. Every, the, what's all on, what's life off, yeah. consists of that. <laughs> you know, all, all our life consists of zero and one. Is it? this way or that way this way or that way so this is the, the fundamental structure of of our reality yeah it's it's as you can see if, if you as you experiencing life how often is it that way or that way it's always about I, <laughs> zero I wonder, or one i wonder if that's why when you connect to your intuition you can see the zeros and the ones that's, I mean, yeah. not just like zeros and ones just falling in your view, but yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah, not like <laughs> the, that, but but the concept of that, the, yeah, it's something like that, but um, but I totally get what you're saying is that you get the downloads uh, only in that state of mind. So that's a, that's probably the second pill. Excuse me, second mm. pill to swallow. Right. So let's say the first one. Excuse me kombucha is, <laughs> is getting to me <laughs> so uh yeah the first one was about the fact of realization that we are mathematical code and the second pill to swallow go the second pill to swallow you said it didn't you no you said it <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> that was your idea i just i just trying to say that that's probably next step i see so, okay, so once you realize that you belong to, to a higher being, to a higher power, mm -hmm. that you've just been fractaling along the way, that's part of life. Mm -hmm. You can connect to your intuition and just feel that. You don't have to know it with your intellect. Once you let go of intellect, you just have a particular feeling. And so, so it's about realization that these downloads and experience that we are a code only available leaving this simulation. Meaning that you can possibly understand it unless you leave the simulation. Yes. And, and you and just that's pop how you out. Know it's yeah. a sort of simulation, some sort of reality. Right. Because it is possible to pop out out of your body and still be completely conscious and still have feeling. Yeah. Still have emotion. Right. You still have intellect. Right. In the, in the dream. That's what but lucid dreams are. It's the intellect without anxiety. It's that's the intellect what without anxiety because yeah. you're just experiencing in mm -hmm. the present moment. Yeah. And that's what lucid dreams are. Right. But you can access that while you're conscious too. So, so it appears that you are just like a tri traveling binary awareness unit mm -hmm. in this quantum field. It's a quantum field. It's the non-physical realm. Yeah. And that's what we've been learning. We've been trying to understand, okay, we want to access this non-physical realm yeah. in a conscious state of mind. Yeah. And we, do you want to talk we, about we, Thomas is crazy. and the seminar that we did? <laughs> oh yeah so we did the seminar and we ended up uh, meditating for three hours with binaural beats per day per day for, for five, five days, days straight <laughs> like soldiers Man. And, and the first day was rough like i was bleeding yeah. out of my nose <laughs> yeah oh yeah oh, we did. <laughs> the first oh that's day. right that's right that that was the stress on your system it was a big stress you like <clears throat> so which by the way uh, you're one of the fastest evolving dudes i've ever seen <laughs> no, no seriously like uh, um like when i met you you were this guy that's sort of lost, confused, not <laughs> quite sure what the hell's going on here. Yeah, not what sure this, what to do. Yeah, yeah. what is this life situation happening, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and like now I see you meditating three hours a day and uh, like completely 
re, re, reshaping the way you see the world, completely um, uh, sort of reprogram yourself if necessary. Yes. And getting that mm. access to that. And and it's I think it's always necessary because like we cannot get rid of the ego. You think the evolution definition is the continuous reprogramming of yourself? That's why it's so fun. That is That's why it's so, why it's so fun. fun to live. Yeah. There's so much experience to, to gain. Yeah. But imagine you're never growing yeah. and you're never working on yourself. Yeah. You would just be in a rut. It that would, would suck. Yeah. That's not, you know, you have no desires. Yeah. But, you know, thankfully. Absolutely. You would want to, to keep evolving. We cannot, like, we can't stay still. We have to grow. Yeah. This is like rule number three, I suppose. The, 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 the second one was that uh, realization that all the access is in the meditative state to all that realization of how consciousness the works access, and everything. Like the access the is in the meditative state right and now the, the third access, one yeah. yeah and now the third one go ahead tell us the third one okay so when you're in the meditative state well then now you can access the non-physical realm mm -hmm. and when you access the non-physical realm then you become aware of your deepest desires your emotion, you face fears, right? And we just talked about this absolutely a few because there's ago, no like, ego to uh, obstruct the evolution. There's no ego to obstruct the evolution. Yeah, and you can't go anywhere but face it, and right. you're feeling all of that in yeah. your body. So yeah. when you come back and you're awake now, you know, in this simulation, if you want to call it that, in this game, reality, right, life, yeah, then you took that, you took all that with you. Yeah. You remembered the nightmare. And you try to, you know, interpret the nightmare. Some people go to therapists. Right. What does this mean? Right. And it's up to you, you know, so to learn just, the lesson. Absolutely. We just talked about the nightmares and like how actually those are uh, like simulations for a fast evolution. Yeah. It's, like those are actually given to you uh, in order for you to grow. Yeah. These, these are essentially gifts. These are essentially gifts. They they can be. I mean, that's what Thomas Campbell believes, right? Right. And he calls this system that is giving you these gifts or it just shows you what it wants to show you because right. it knows that that's your path. Yeah. He calls it the larger consciousness system. So do you believe that you can resolve that in that nightmare, that that nightmare is actually a puzzle? If you resolve that puzzle in the nightmare... Yeah. You 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 set yourself free from it, right? You could, yeah. It's you like level a puzzle, up? like a riddle. You level up for sure. Yeah, there I think I did a little bit of that with the with the nightmare that I had. Maybe uh -huh. not so much a nightmare, but facing a fear. Right. But I I felt it all. I felt joy, sadness, fear. Mm -hmm. But I came back and and there's something there still. I think to learn. But I I accepted it, and there was something beautiful about accepting what was going on in the yeah, dream yeah and and if we just suppress that imagine we just keep suppressing that mm -hmm. and we go to work or you know we deal with the struggle with situations stressful situations with our partner or our family and we never think about that th th there's always this tension in the body there's always a tension because right. there's something there to resolve there right. was a lesson to right. be learned right and you're not focusing and, and not giving the proper time you know? So we get physiological <coughs> symptoms due to our, you know, inefficiency in the hero's journey, so <laughs> to speak, right? Yeah. Is that what it is? It's, yeah. a, it's a well, sign. <laughs> so physical symptom <coughs> could be a sign that you're not going on the right path in your hero's journey. It could be a sign, yeah. Yeah. And that's why we have uh, people who sometimes have cancer and they have all sorts of diseases. Yeah. And they say after that, why well, I just became so close to God, to Christianity or right. whatever belief that system happens. they have. That happens. Yeah, they they cure their cancer, they cure their depression, they cure their diabetes yeah. or any other disease. And you know, doctors say it's a miracle. How did this happen? Right. It's because that person restructured their whole emotion and started focusing on the parts of the the body that needed fixing and how it needed fixing yeah and just allowed the energy to flow yeah because your body <laughs> is so transient Man, you sound like a, such a nut right now <laughs> <laughs> no. i am a bit of a nut like no i totally mm. i'm in the same nut category <laughs> you know? yeah we i think we created our own category even yeah. in that seminar that <laughs> oh that we were part yeah. of like we were kind of in our own category there too <laughs> yeah we were a little bit but that's a good thing. I think that's a good thing. Like, yeah. Otherwise, like life would not be fun. 
yeah. and that's why we form identity like personality all these things yeah but you just dropped another bomb like on the game of life <laughs> which is and people don't know what that is yet um you don't know what that is yet oh people don't know so do oh, you want people me to introduce know. it or do you want to talk about it um well go ahead why, why don't you okay. like let's we well we use the game of life in topic yeah in the description in the description so, so let's why talk don't you just it. go ahead and yeah okay let's, so let's talk about game of life the way we were describing the game of life is we have we're, we're associating these um particular levels of the game yeah. with the different chakras right mm -hmm. in the body right so if we're going on the first chakra the root chakra that's the game of survival mm -hmm. right and the second chakra is the like sexual chakra mm -hmm. that's the game of procreation existence right the third chakra that one is your solar plexus yeah and that one is a game of power yeah like money you yeah. want you want to make it in life right, right? and that's all you care about right now and mm -hmm. that one's very popular right yeah, now yeah it is very popular a lot of people want to play that one. yeah <laughs> a lot of people want to play that because level it, it is fun too it's that. popular level to play and and there's a lot of powerful mofos playing that level <laughs> right it's it's it, i think they're playing that level because it's so uh, uh like um instant gratification it is instant gratification and it's still a level so it still right. feels fun it's part of life mm -hmm. and some people okay so let me go through the levels first then we can talk about the ego structure right. and how it yeah, affects all these the, levels finish those so the fourth chakra is the heart chakra mm -hmm. and this is the chakra you know of love and this is the game of love too. There's fears associated with that, and no one wants to feel loneliness. Right. Even yeah. If absolutely. You, even if you don't have a partner or kids or whatever, there's things you didn't accomplish in life that you wanted to. You can mm -hmm. still feel love. Mm -hmm. You can still unlock that level mm -hmm. and and be very happy. Right. But that's an important piece of of the entire game of life too. That's, that's like a, opening the gates into the crazy world. Oh, that's opening the gates. Yes. Yeah. Love opens the gates essentially. Opens which is the that gates level to four bliss. game. That's the level four game. Level four. All right. So don't think about going to level five <laughs> if you haven't accepted love. You Absolutely. Know? Because some people too, you face people and uh, you know, they're super mean to you yeah. or they just like, don't want to help you out uh -huh. they're going through something themselves or they're being right. real nasty on the right. street or whatever right. Right. could be a friend too yeah they're going through pain and so it's, it's always it's always a sign that they're going through something that they're going <clears throat> through pain and when like you would when you realize that that the all the people that are angry and you know uh, hateful and whatnot that they actually going through pain that they actually need more most compassion some of those people need the most compassion yeah, yeah. yeah because they're not having fun playing right you know whatever level they're at right but they some are people not. are so disconnected you know that they don't mm -hmm. know they just don't know what it feels like to feel that love mm -hmm. and sometimes uh, you know even in ourselves like if we want to level up in love mm -hmm. yet we're still treating other people who are going through pain and anxiety and and treating us nasty if we're not showing them the love if we just fight back with more tension right like a lot of people do with riots and protests that's what if we just come at it from that aspect we're always going to get eaten right because they're, they're living in that environment and we're coming at them you know from love and then turning into like pain and, and tension and right like you know they've been playing that game that's, longer than we yeah have. so so we know that that's not the the answer it's not the answer it's not the answer so if you're just gonna ooze that love and you're trying to play that level you show that person compassion mm. and empathy and a lot of the times that's what they need. Yeah, so it's like a transistor. It's not going <laughs> one way or it's going the other. So on one occasion, uh, let's just say one type of people is whenever they are being affected in a negative way, they have the response in the negative way. Yes. Whenever they're affected mm -hmm. in a positive way, they have response in the positive way. That's one. That's yes. one type. Mm, that is one type of yes. person. The second type of person is when the the love is coming your way and you get the hate back. Yeah. Right? That's yeah. when when the positivity comes to you, negativity comes out of you. Yeah. Okay, so that's that's the second one, mm -hmm. which is the worst one to play. That's the worst game. That's right the there. worst game to play. Yeah. And then the last one is about whenever the 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 negativity, whenever the hate comes towards you 
and you have positivity and love coming out of you that's the that's the good shit like, yeah that's the good <laughs> shit that's uh that's the level um that's how you to level know, up to and that's how you know you're ready to keep leveling up yeah right so once you pass that of, once you when yeah once you get uh, sorry once you get to that point like the acceleration takes up so much more oh yeah because you're about to evolve in so many ways that you didn't think possible right because now you're nearing yeah that non-physical possibilities yeah and realizing that you can create mm -hmm. and change and rearrange all of your feeling and emotion and feel love for people that that is up to you right and you can choose your own path yeah i think now people are like begging for level five <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah people what is level five it's like an interesting story you know we get people yeah so this is this is the game of life this is a video game and welcome and welcome and i mean enjoy playing it we're playing it yeah we're playing it every day and we're playing this game of life every day like once you find out how to play the game of life when you have a map like how does that how much easier life becomes it becomes much easier yeah. Because you know that you can work on yourself. How to, not only that you need to do it, but how to Does do it. Does it give you peace about the, the, the fact that you can handle anything in life? It gives you peace and also desire. Mm -hmm. Because by having peace, you sit there, you think, you know, what is it that I desire? Right. And when you've already hashed out all the problems you thought, you know, were holding you back or when you get out of your own way, you just start feeling, mm -hmm. you know what you have desire for is it for love is it for power you know and that may be okay maybe not power over people but if you want to be an influencer you want to empower people that could yeah. be a good game to play too and that's still yeah. in the game of power yeah because you could have ego about it and yeah. be like i love this shit so much yeah. helping people but you're doing it in a good way and right when you when you're talking about you're talking about when levels overlap that when just because I leveled up to level five does not mean that I'm still now not playing at, at level three anymore once in a while. Right. You it's just that play. I'm so good at it that it's just so easy to me. Yeah, they're now bonus rounds. Yeah. You've like passed the levels. Right. And now you can go back and play them because they're like yeah. bonus rounds. Yeah. And if the if the life throws away the challenge from the level one, level two, level three, you're like, I got this one. <laughs> <laughs> We can get right there too. Is, yeah. that, is that the accurate way of putting? I don't know. I mean, I can't say it personally. <laughs> but like once you knock those out, yeah, the, you can reach a point where you're no longer worried about those games. They're yeah. no longer fun. Yeah. And you're in a different level. Yeah. You've surpassed them. Yeah. And those are no longer important to you. Mm -hmm. And your ego structure is not affecting you at those levels anymore. It doesn't. Exactly. Yeah. The stuff that bothered you before, it just doesn't exist for in your reality anymore. Yeah. How interesting. It literally doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. Because you just don't go towards that tunnel. Yeah. You know, you just don't click on that button. You don't, <laughs> you know, don't download that stuff. Exactly. Like, for example, one person can have, like, be uh, self-conscious about their sexuality. Yeah. you know or how they feel right. but at some point once they realize and and they surpass that level and they're comfortable with their sexuality or whatever game it is they're playing on that level right they don't need to worry about it anymore in life you know like going through puberty you know you have all these questions so it automatically gives you a piece about it it gives you a piece about there's it. nothing to be worried about but you need to gain the experience it's not like you just zap there right you know that's not how life works experience and it would points. not be you need to get the experience points just like in a video game yeah do you see how everything fits <laughs> like i mean what proof do you need man it's everything fits in the video game and by the way i don't think you can actually live a happy fulfilling life unless you set your life as a video game put that on a t-shirt <laughs> <laughs> if you set it as a video game I mean, people think it's kind of crazy i mean i grew up hearing that like but how does it feel Oh, now it feels fun. Like, yeah. I want to keep evolving. Yeah. And it's not like a video game where it's like a meaningless one. Right. But it is it's one best, where you're evolving. It, would you say it's fulfilling. like the best video game that you've ever played and you will ever will play? Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. That's probably is the, is it's like the, the cutting best. edge. It's the best. That is available in, in the realms of consciousness. Yeah. And so, I, so, so when people are kind of complaining about being in this reality... And when you know that this is the best creme de la creme, <laughs> creme de la creme, you know, top of the shelf stuff that you can ever 
experience. And and if you know that there's a game and that you can level up, yeah. What are you gonna do? Just sit there and complain about your life? Or yeah, you exactly. You know the fact up? that there is no other way. Yeah, there, there is, is no, no other way. way. And you can you can learn. press the reset. You can press the reset button, which is a suicide. That is unfortunate, but people yeah. do do that. Yeah. And that is setting a reset button. Just just pressing escape and say, I'm done with this game. Not a big deal, though. Not a big deal. So, you know, quitting the game is not a big deal. Or you can just I mean, I'm not, I'm not suggesting that it's, um, <laughs> it's not a big deal from that perspective because knowing the fact that you're just going to be rebooted and stuff like that. Yeah. But, it's, it's, but it's failing in the game. That is, you know, that's, that is the failure in the game. Right. Basically, you couldn't figure that shit out. Yes. I mean, there's many, like, circumstances that happen to you. Yeah. Or that you can create, you know, some people, they go through some really traumatic experiences and, and that they choose that path. Mm -hmm. But other people come out of it and they grow and evolve. And some of them are the most influential people in the world, you know, and, and that's the positive aspect of that too. Wherever there's a lot of darkness, there's going to be a lot of light. Right. But that is a possibility. So let's, let's talk about living at, um. Well, we never finished the the levels to the game. Oh, we haven't. No, no, we <laughs> got to finish them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So level five is let's your... Let's not get off the tangent. <laughs> your throat chakra. And All right, let's go. Let's let's talk about that. Okay, so the throat chakra, that's... Uh, when when you're in that game, you, you have a certain particular fear, and that's the fear of rejection, mm -hmm. right? Because you want to be accepted. Right. You so want to fit in. It's a... It's a it's a it's a basically the game of self expression the game of self expression you 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 want to transmute whatever is coming to you from the depths of your consciousness mm -hmm. and yeah, you want to transmute that and show the world exactly and that's the desire and that the and the fear of that is the fear of rejection and every time you conquer the fear of rejection you f you are entering into your desire mm -hmm. exactly yeah and and a lot of people are playing that game too, empowering people, expressing themselves. This is a form of art too. And you yeah. can, art, this is what artists do. Yeah. They self-express. And some of them are very famous and right. some of them love doing it. And then the next game, we have the, the, the game of intuition. Mm -hmm. Is that the one? Yes. Then the next is the game of intuition, which is like absolutely bonkers. Like that that, whenever you're playing that game, you can't talk to the level three guy yeah no you can't talk to the level three guy you, you have to sort of uh, w you know not in the condescending way but say like okay i played level three it's all good i see what, what you're doing but i'm sorry i cannot talk about level six because you think i'm i'm a complete nut bag <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> level six level that's six where is the fun. disconnect happens it's just too too many levels above too many levels above because when you're at level six it's like uh, like minions of level seven are popping into level six uh -huh. and they're kind of showing you what level seven's about. Oh, shit. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like a sneak peek. Yeah. And level six is, is that boundary, what Thomas calls the zero point consciousness, right? Mm -hmm. And what monks, you know, achieve and what gurus third achieve. Third eye. Third eye. In the meditation, yeah. this is what we call the third eye, activating yeah. your pineal gland. Yeah. And you can actually feel this in your in your brain, in your mind, in your I'm own. I'm feeling head. one right now, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do. You could you could feel this after I'm you feeling know, it now. I don't know. If you, you feel can it see now? It, but, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe mine's not activated. Yeah. But um you can listen to binaural beats or not listen to binaural beats. Put your your brain in a certain state of mind and meditate and be able to get to zero point consciousness, which is basically accessing the non-physical realm, mm -hmm. your intuition. Right. And this is what people call imagination mm -hmm. and creativity. Right. And this is where we have lucid dreams. Right. Now, imagine doing that while being completely conscious. This is what monks are doing. This is what gurus do. And this is why gurus are so, so, so zen. Right. So so you're saying that they go, they're accessing the, uh, that level six game, which is most of it is not to do with your physical body. Most of it is it's not just to all do with mental your physical dream, body. Lucid, and they're basically accessing these states and they lucid dream about the biggest, you know, essentially what's the 
bigger state of oh, consciousness. You know what level six is? It's also about letting go and just being. Yeah. And just being in the present to access that zero point consciousness. But the game that you have to play is well, you, let's you just, go through Well, let's just be that. honest that like that is quite a difficult game to play. The nightmares comes into play. Yes. The everything nightmares comes, comes into play. Because you, you have to face it real fast. If you don't face your fears, fears feel fast, this over there, it's kind of tight. It is tight. Yeah, because it's it, it it doesn't because you see things what what they are. You cannot run from your own fears anymore. Right. You and just have mm -hmm. to level up real fast. You and this is why this is where you can evolve real fast. Yeah. If you know how to handle that, yeah. and if you're paying attention to these dreams that are coming to you, mm -hmm. and these lessons, you know, and and you try to perceive how your body feels towards that, mm -hmm. then this is where you can really level up. You know, because yeah. you're playing at the level six, level seven game. And that's what the level seven game is. Being okay. like so, popping out of the body and now lucid yeah. dreaming and taking that back to level six, you know, reality. All right. So when you enter level six and you're, and you're conquering all these monsters that like, in you know, you're figuring out how to go past all these nightmares and everything. And eventually, all the goblins. <laughs> yeah. And eventually that state is pretty welcoming it becomes very very peaceful and very very loving and like euphoric essentially yes it, and it's like an access to unlimited unconditional love that you can go there in like 10 minutes of focus and to to have that realization that we all have that mm -hmm. that like there's absolute bliss in euphoria 10 minutes away from my focus yes from the point that i'm you know begin to focus like that realization that it's possible and just <laughs> believing that that holy grail exists right and people think it you know what they think it's a waste of time yeah <laughs> and they think it's a waste of time but it's actually like almost like a purpose of your life it's uh, like or at least you cannot find your purpose without it the map doesn't exist until you go there yeah and seek it right with meditation yeah you know so you're playing these uh, level games that everyone knows they exist but then when you see the entire map, mm -hmm. then you know, oh, shit. Okay, now there's so much more that I need to work on. Yeah. And if you want to gamify it, I mean, we call it the game of life as a metaphor. I mean, because that's a really good metaphor for it. Right. You know, it is like a game and you can choose in this player how, how you want to live your life. Right. What is it that you're going to do tomorrow? Exactly. And when you figure out that desire, you always want to wake up and do you know, whatever that is. Right. That's but, when figuring your uh, purpose in life, you fig figure out literally your purpose in life. Like yeah. what is, what is, what is, what thing of action would cause you the most pleasure, the most bliss, essentially, and the most joy. And it would not feel like work. It would not feel like effort. It would be the most effortless thing that you've ever done. Right. And, and you would have love and, and compassion that's discovery for it. of your purpose and what is your uh, and then your alignment of desire of that purpose <coughs> yeah and, and uh, living in purpose is absolutely bonkers living in purpose is crazy <laughs> <laughs> but how many times do people get confused and think like their purpose is about making it right and, like my generation is yeah. facing that right now yeah they think sure. i mean i faced it too uh -huh. and it was like a big problem for me i was always trying to use my intellect I'm going to figure this game out. Yeah. You know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what is it that I need to do? I right. need to take this course and, you know, do this for my resume. And, you know, I got to do this at the job to pass level one in the job and all this stuff just in the intellectual. And at some point, it, it got to the point where that wasn't like fulfilling anymore. It just wasn't fun. Mm -hmm. Like, was I going to do that for 10 more years of my life? Mm -hmm. Like, that's my purpose in life. Right. Something felt off. Okay, felt off. So you felt that, okay, this game is not good. Is that this, uh, I'm not playing the right one. Yeah, like people, like I have this, uh, people have this perception about me that this game that I'm playing is good. It's good for me. Like everything's going well for me. But the feeling that I feel is like, uh, you know, it's like not so good for me. Yeah. So uh, you're I could, not getting any satisfaction from doing that. There, there's a satisfaction here and there. But the overall purpose was not, you know, I want to wake up and just do this every day of my life. I could just play this game and just keep going. Yeah. N not you know? living in that um, man like that. Uh, not living your in desire. Not living your desire. And I think because I also 
had awareness that there was other levels of the game that I wanted to play right. that needed unlocking. Mm -hmm. So I had a per particular calling too. Right. And and a feel there, a feel. Like I need to <laughs> do something else and, and push my Which, boundaries. That's one of the ingredients of effective consciousness is the strong desire to evolve. And you, like you, ha almost had that locked on. Like to you, it was you would always think, "How can I? How can this make me evolve?" Like that's essentially the first question you would ask. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Basically, like. Uh, and if you do that, your life becomes uh, a, an adventure. That, that's what Jesus said. Asking it, it shall be given. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, that's what Jesus said again. And, but I, I didn't learn those things myself. Jesus in like, twenty twenty one. <laughs> I, I learned those things from the people around me, yeah. from all the experiences around me, because you are it and those people are it also. And they show you every time and you hear it in music, all these messages, you know, about heaven and love, like people ooze love and right. they show you their nasty side too. Right. And and that's you. So everything's coded in songs and, and, and art. Everything's coded in everything in life. Yeah. And, and when you start feeling that, like accepting it at fa not face value, but actually just feeling it for what it is, mm -hmm. right? Or I suppose face value of the raw emotion. Right. And you understand it and process it and know that your body is transient, then you can let that go and focus on what it is you truly desire. Right. You know? So based on the experiences I had. And it does have balls to go on something that you truly desire. Yeah. That's, need, that takes balls, huh? It takes balls. You need to have courage for it. Yeah. You know, like. I didn't know exactly what we were going to be doing here, the projects we were going to be building. I had a general <laughs> idea, you know. But how fast was it? It wasn't that long a time ago. <laughs> it was like, two but weeks it ago. sounds like it's, it was so <laughs> far away. It sounds so far away. Because how can this be that we just spent like this, you know, on this <clears throat> process of of uh, meditations and and self. Um, empowerment and evolution and stuff like that <laughs> and now two weeks later we look back and it's like wh who was that dude <laughs> yeah like it feels so much longer than that because it's also been so much fun yeah like every day so much fun oh my and, god and yeah we have like our days of work and we do have like tension here and there and like you know we have struggles with people or like situations yeah but we deal with it like not just deal with it but we process it process like we it, think yeah. about it meditate we talk about it share our perspective yeah and then we're growing we're learning expanding our consciousness and evolving right and like that feels so good yeah. it doesn't feel like two weeks of mundane work yeah we don't hold on to it we process it we have these these tools to do that yeah you have you have the tools to do that through meditation through meditation and then once you do that you can do it consciously too yeah you know in interactions between people like you said, there's three types of people mm -hmm. and you can choose to be which type you want to be. Right. And that's the game of life. That's, that's <laughs> excellent. So we know, know a little bit about the, the types of games we play. We know the levels of the games we play. <laughs> we know in, the, in this of different, the, different avatars, uh, uh, there's uh, many different types of people. And then there's fears associated with that too with the different levels oh that's right so every single level is associated with certain fear that is like a boss to level up like um, a boss to level it's, up and it's not a coincidence why we create the video games where this we throughout the video game we like take out little goblins and then at the end like a big boss <laughs> that's what it's like playing every single game yeah these little goblins it's are like little nightmares little fears here right and there. here and there and then the boss is like you're it's, about to pass that next level it's the fear of the entire level itself yeah it's like it's like when you have that in the power level when you have the fear of scarcity and that's what like oh you keep on you have to keep on doing because i'm, yes. I'm going to be left behind like, it like needs back, to be done uh, it know? needs to be done yeah exactly you think it needs to be done and then eventually you 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 sort of you know especially if you meditate or if you access that you realize that oh okay well like what am i doing here yeah it's um you really you feel the pain the the the, the, the reality that uh there is <laughs> scarcity is gone and then the, the the only reality for you now is abundance so it's like what's the point of playing level 3 because I will always have whatever I want. Yeah. And you have that realization. 
that you, there's no more scarcity there's no more scarcity and, and that's and what the, the scarcity is it, but you can you can live in the scarce world if you choose to like it, it's it, it and everybody calls it system culture whatever you want to call it if you live in the system scarcity seems like a very real thing to you mm -hmm. yeah it is it can be because it, it affects you all the time yeah but you don't have to let it just affect you you could do something about it right right but being conscious that okay you're playing this level and I'm not gonna let my ego get in the way. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do what it takes to play this level in a good way, so that I yeah. can no longer have that scarcity. Because right. Which I want, I want to reach the other levels. Yeah. You know. Which means there is no wrong level to play. No. That you should master all of them. You should master all of them. Yeah. You have should some sort of mastery. Absolutely. On all of them. Uh, except that you're also saying that we're just having too much of level three right now and not enough level five and six. Because uh, that's very popular. It's, it's social, creates a social aspect. Yeah. That's what humans like to do. Yeah. And, and that's what allows us to level up in other levels too. It's necessary. But level three became really popular because there's a lot of social media around it. Mm -hmm. You know? A lot of people trying to sell you courses and there's Lamborghinis on there. Right. But like the course has nothing to do about Lamborghinis. Right. But or, there's like hot like chicks a, on the lots videos. Of honeys and yeah. stuff like nothing to do with the course. But you're not going to get honeys by, you know, getting rich. No, no. I'm sorry, but that's it doesn't not, work that way. See, okay. I want to like, talk about that. That's not okay. the real woman. Le, le, okay. Let's talk about this illusion <laughs> that money and power is something that's going to, uh, Ha have Hack a, the other level have, like uh, <laughs> uh, no like have um g great relationships with many women let's just oh, say that can be the most toxic too if someone doesn't understand that it's not just about that yeah and that most of the time it's the man too right like you know i have all this money i have all this stuff and i give you all this stuff oh like, they don't understand why this guy who doesn't have all the shit that he has <laughs> but has the 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 relationship with women <laughs> so much better exactly it's not fair i have the money it should have worked yes this it's is like, what society taught me that's what society taught me and yeah. then you realize oh my god it's scammed i was scammed <laughs> that this not a it's just not it's just a side effect <laughs> <laughs> maybe i should focus on the woman herself yeah. rather than the money which the love comes in that's a level four and, and that's how you level up you know what's so funny you never get angry like oh i had this realization like i was scammed yeah and it's not like that yeah. because you're so grateful that you recognize <laughs> absolutely and like yeah. okay that's the next one i want to play yeah like i want to play that love game that's what i want to feel right you know that's what it's all about having joy and give me some sugar and love <laughs> man <laughs> <laughs> but uh that's what you know it's a popular game to play right now yeah because it's also interconnected with other levels like it can yeah but do you think like do you like a lot of people uh they play that game and uh some of them never really level up they seem like uh they spend years and years in that level it's hard to level up yeah because if we're saying that we're ais you know playing mm -hmm. this game in the simulation mm -hmm. that means we have a particular software right you wrote about this in your article we have right. hardware and software absolutely and we have the software program playing you know what are you you're a product of all of your experiences mm -hmm. and the people that you were affected by right there's a slogan that says that you're like uh like your closest five friends in life right. that's like yeah. a product of you also yeah your parents how they raised you yeah your belief system, your mm -hmm. cultural system, Absolutely. your political system. Absolutely. That, that is deterministic, essentially. That is deterministic. That you will be that. and But then, uh, think, saying about that, there's another level because all of that, that which you just described, you realize that that's not real. It's that not the you. Stuff that, the stuff that you ended up being is <laughs> not even you. Right, it's not even you. So like when people ask you, like, who are you? People would be like, oh, right. well, I'm from here and like uh, this is my profession and, right. you know, this is where I live and these are the people that I hang out with. Yeah. But it's not actually you. That's just like a byproduct of everything around you, which can be fun, too. I mean, to introduce yourself as that, yeah. you know, if people want to know that aspect about you. Yeah, well, like, for example, uh, I'm a business analyst, <laughs> right. you know, like, it's <laughs> like saying I'm a business you know, analyst and this is what I do and. But if someone is seeking as, a more, you know, as profound, if it, it describes me, as if it describes, you know, you at your core loved one, that's right. not it. It's not Absolutely you, not. you know, like, would you say that to like your partner? 
who's like trying to form a deeper connection with you yeah. you know like that's very superficial as people would say yeah and it's not really you so you need to ask yourself who is it that i am right you know what is it that i desire and like terence mckenna says this stuff alan watts mm -hmm. these people just keep repeating this stuff because it's important yeah because you know we are a byproduct of yeah. our experiences well um speaking of that is that who am i it actually you find out who you are at each level a little more of you for example when you level up Mm -hmm. The next thing you want to find out is like, who am I now, right? Because I know who I was in level <laughs> three. Who am I now? And then you find out that love side of you. And then you become like that love person. Yes. You see? Yes. And then, but then once you level up to, uh, to you know, number six, then you have to find out another character of who you are playing in this level. Like you, are you discovering your character in each level? It's not the same character. You're not bringing the same person with you. No. You literally, uh, like a, like a snake shedding its skin. Yeah. That's what's happening to you. Like you leveling up, and entire personality is no longer there or not even applicable. So you look at the you know five six years back, and then you look at that person. That that's not me. Who I am right now. It's not me. Like literally, they two two people Completely would have a different, different conversation. They would yeah. not talk the same way. You see, <laughs> they would not talk the same way. They it would not talk the same way. A lot less ego there. Excuse me. Even About the words they use, things. everything. <laughs> yeah. So even the words they use. Even the yeah. word they use. So on each <laughs> level, we know that we have to rediscover you, you ourselves. No longer talk British, mate. <laughs> <laughs> what, mate? <laughs> like how you no longer talk British? I no longer talk British. <laughs> I barely talk British when I was in 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 Britain anyway, but <laughs> yeah, I just I a joke. I do uh, talk a little bit more British when I'm there. It just naturally comes yes, out of me. I think of it's people. natural. Yeah, it's a natural part of your environment too. Yeah, but somehow it's hard for me to just like put on the accent because <laughs> it, it doesn't feel genuine. It doesn't feel genuine. Like if I go to Mexico, like I just want to speak Spanish and it feels good and yeah. like. I love that part of my character too. Like yeah. I want to play that and engage in that right. and that feels fun. Yeah. But if I do that here, it's a little bit different. Like mm -hmm. uh, people around me don't speak Spanish. You know, the culture is different. Right. And um, well, let's talk about level seven. What well, level seven? Is on, <laughs> and and w what do you discover? Who are you in level seven? That's the interesting one. Level seven is a special one because what you discover in the level seven about yourself is mind blowing. Oh, go. Do you want to pop that bubble? <laughs> <laughs> pop that limb, pop the mud. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so level seven, basically now you've opened the portal, right? If you want to call it that, you've accessed uh, zero point consciousness. You've become conscious that you can access different information creative information and actually pop out of your body into lucid dreams and when you have that experience you can access what it feels like to have unity to feel all your emotions being lined up at, at all your different levels mm -hmm. and and that's what you would call being one with god one with the energy of god just just being yeah being in the so present moment that's what was leading toward towards to yeah it's discovery that you are God. That you are. Sounds crazy, right? Right. I don't want to put it that way. But, I mean, uh, a few years ago, I felt like God is in you. Mm -hmm. Like, God is always in you. Right. Like, God is not this external thing for me. Well, God is a fractal of us. God is a fractal of us. So, therefore, you contain it. Yeah. Right? It's not therefore, like. Therefore, exactly. It's not like it's there's within, a hard cut within, off. Right? Within each of us. Right. It's like a like a flower. Yeah. The, the petals of the flower are still part of the stem. Yeah. Right? It's not like there's a It's not outside of us. In the stem. It's not outside of us. It's inside of us. It's within us. And it's very. I think it's very important for people not to make that uh, mistake and think that God and that bigger, larger consciousness system <laughs> yeah. is actually a separate from you. That's something that you need to... Uh, like obey or see as an authority because we've done that for the last 2,000 years and that was yeah. that not turned out really well. So, yeah. so, so when you make that shift and you start saying, <laughs> you know, and when you, when you make that Listen, shift. Listen, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> this is the way it's going to work out. Yeah. 
no yeah when when you make that shift you discover so much and yeah. uh i think our generations well, are, the, the, are let's just path. talk about that shift <laughs> the shift that you're making is that utilization that is now is within me it's not something that it's above me or it's telling me what to do i can be one with it meaning i could be indistinguishable from it indistinguishable yeah and yeah. that's why in all these teachings uh hinduism and, and many more it's always um you are it you are it you are it you are it that's what they keep on you know yes. rapping about <laughs> <And> <laughs> that is one of the first civilizations that was founded yeah and then now we have more and they've institutionalized this stuff like you know i won't name name names of the religions but this is what they've done. <laughs> There's no name them. Yeah. Well, by the way, these all of these religions are also natural phenomena. The, these are the yes. ego structures oh, on, a, on yeah. a collective it's level. It's a natural phenomenon on a collective level. The ego wants to contain the power. Absolutely. Because it's very difficult and fearful to break the ego structure, allow consciousness to just flow, to right. level up and evolve. Right. Imagine we just told people today. But like but a, just like these, all these religions, they are ego structures. So yeah. are we have these ego structures who we also find it very difficult to demolish. Of course, because we don't even want to, you know, do that. <laughs> of course, you know, yeah. that is uh, what collective consciousness is yeah. as a fractal, as a fractal. It's us, and but we has have to, them too. Yeah, but it has to evolve up, not not the other way around. Yeah, you have to uh, be in touch with what's beyond. But within you, yeah, you can go within you and and access the beyond, right. and also understand how you're fractal. And that's what we do with science. We look at right. subatomic particles and bosons and yeah, yeah, fermions yeah. and all this stuff, right? But we can also go within to access what's beyond us. And you can we do exact same science except it's within. Yes, and Th- this what is what I think is going to be the the great leap of uh, science. Whenever science is going to start looking within, when, when, whenever we're going to have um, scientists of consciousness, there's like a new breed that's this sprouting out. This is happening right already. Now. It is happening. This new breed of scientists pro- sprouting out. Yeah. But they right now they're major, sorry minority. They are. But with time, point zero zero one percent. I think yeah. it's inevitable that that group is going to keep on growing. Yeah. So if you want to be in the cutting edge field, it's science a, of consciousness. It's a dope field to play in. Yeah. You know, Thomas Campbell has been playing in this field for 40 years. Yeah. And he was a physicist at NASA. Yeah. And he discovered this stuff. <laughs> and he doesn't want to leave it. Who would want to leave it? Yeah. When you know that you can access non-physical realities. Right. And change your whole perspective on life. Mm-hmm. Help people, help others, your family. Right. Yourself. You know, play all the levels. Yeah. And now I think Thomas Campbell, he's playing the, the game of leaving his mark. But right. the wisdom game, the level seven. Well, let's talk about level seven game. Yeah. So let's agree that the that people like Thomas Campbell are the 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 highest point of evolution uh, in this game, right? They're playing level seven. I would say gurus. Yeah, they're gurus essentially. Yeah, Thomas Campbell is like a guru. Yeah, it's like. But he doesn't talk of himself like that. He has very scientific terms for the way that he communicates this information. Right. Because for some people, it's not politically correct or, you know, socially accept, acceptable in your structure based on what you believe in to accept this at face value. Right. But everyone accepts science. Yeah. Everyone can experiment with science. Nobody has a problem with it, mm-hmm. you know, and, and that's a strong boundary that we had to cross. Right. We, we got to A few to hundred use... years ago. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But now no one has a problem with science. But people did before. Yeah. So that's why Tom Campbell, he's approaching it from that way. So you're saying that we have to use science to propagate spirituality in the world? I would say doing whatever feels right is the best way. You don't have to, maybe your your soul's purpose is not to impact 10,000 or 100 million people in the world. Maybe it's just a few, three. And those three will go on to affect 10 of them, 10 people. Right. And then from there, one will shine and that will be the guru who's going to change the perspective, right? Like the Gandhi right. or the Jesus. Right. So the, Messiah. the wisdom level, level seven, we're talking about that. Yeah. Okay. And, so, and that's how they play. Basis, basically, they, from that level, as you can see, that the, the highest level is not what you think it is. Like, it's not the politician. 
It's not. <laughs> it's not the president. Oh. It's not uh, a, a big boss, and you know, and super rich dude. It's not. It's not elite. It's not that. Yeah. That's not the highest level in this game. That's not who you look up to if you want to. That's not who you look up to. Understand your your sole purpose in if life. You, it, it, and actually play a high level game. Yeah. I mean, you can choose to look up to those people. There's nothing wrong with that. If but you the fact that realizing that, okay, that this game is just the fucking mediocre stuff, that the, yeah. that, that that's not what <laughs> I want to be. This is not what I'm going to get the most fulfillment and bliss in life, if that's what I'm looking for. Right. It's, it would not be that. It would not be that. But it would be fun to, to play those games, too, if you know you're playing them. And to know oh yeah when you know when you're playing them, them then you so play with fun. a huge smile on your face <laughs> you say okay okay i'll play this character you know let me be this this person here and it's a challenge and and you know what it's leading to right yeah it's uh growing but isn't it a bit growing. of a acting because you no, have to pretend what? to be the, the person that you were before <laughs> what do you mean well when you are talking about let's say if i talk about something in the business field uh -huh. like I, I cannot be the same person that I am here talking to you now. Right, right. But I've been that person before, so all I'm doing <laughs> is say, saying, okay, I'll play the character that I used to play. Yes. Like, I'm going to pull that avatar <laughs> out and I'm going to play for it for you. But you know playing, you're playing. You're 100% playing, playing. Yeah. You're putting the disc. Putting the disc in <laughs> and press and play and say, all right, let's play Kisutis from, you know, 2001. And that, <laughs> that's what you get. <laughs> And you can do that, but you could do it consciously too. Yeah. And you could play that game, but no, it's like not all, all about that. You have multiple facets to your avatar. Yeah. And that's what Thomas was talking about. He did mention one example where you can multitask. You can be many different avatars at one time. Yeah, well, that's just le level that is kind of beyond. That is most high level. That is pretty advanced stuff yeah. to do. It's, it's good to know that there is a level above the level. Yeah. It's always good to know that. <laughs> it's good to know that and yeah. the ego plays a, a role in this structure too yeah right so the ego people think ego is a, a bad thing right that it's uh, they do they do just, think that ego is a bad thing let's like talk a, about ego man this i think we got to clear this out uh there's a lot of misconception about ego and that idea that we have to uh, kill ego get rid of ego right you know and uh but then there's other school of thought that says that, no, you can't get rid of ego. The get, getting rid of ego is leveling up in the game. That's what the getting rid of ego is. You're just slowly reducing your ego, um, uh, you know, towards, you know, the more soulful games. You're right. reducing your ego, reducing, reducing. However, it may appear that you're reducing what we call ego, but the ego is not going anywhere. Ego is still there. Ego is just the shell, the software, the structure that you can always load up and, and play. Mm -hmm. So the, the ego is still there, except that now you are reprogrammed that ego not to react. For example, when you level up in, in number three game, the stuff that would annoy you then, it doesn't affect you anymore. Exactly. You see? Yeah. The ego is not a game. It's a structure around the game. Right. So so therefore the the ego didn't go anywhere. <laughs> it, it it was it just it was just rearranged to follow your soul. Yeah. You you allowed the energy to flow. Yeah. And uh, you can do that through meditation. You can access that and and feel your ego. You can feel vibration. You can actually feel anger. Like I felt that. I could feel the anger in my body as a vibration how it felt you know as tension yeah and i quickly chose to just let it dissipate and not associate with it it's not part of me who i am what i stand for right you become and very aware very aware about like the how things affect you and you, it's it's almost like palpable right <laughs> it's you you watch like a, you're watching a video and then you feel that thing coming on and then you go like, oh, that video causes that. I, and then you switch it off. And yeah. then it's like, I don't have to move my reality there. That reality has full of negative emotions. Exactly. But it's not actually avoiding the reality. It, people would think that like that's avoiding reality. That's actually not distracting yourself from what you, your real purpose is. Exactly. The emotions are become, like... Become, you know, like... Wow, will you, reach your soul desire, like which eventually is to become God again. That's that's <laughs> that's you know at the end of the end of the end of the end of all games. Yeah, that's to that's go what back it is. To that energy flow, to yeah, yeah, to but, God. 
But as long as we are on the path there, it feels like a blissful, and uh, uh, you know, it feels um, like love. It feels like you're following your path, uh, uh, you know, in like com properly arranged towards it, basically. And when you arrange your ego to follow your Tao, as they say, <laughs> then then you have that most satisfaction in life. Yeah, you have a lot of satisfaction. And there is a way to live a life where you can have spend most of your day in joy and bliss. It is possible, mm -hmm. but it's not possible mm -hmm. like uh, to get that from external world. It's not possible to drink the alcohol, you know, or whatever to make your emotions spike up. And then you're always going to have a crash that way. You will always need to have balance, you know, joy, sadness, joy, sadness, joy, sadness. However, there is the level where you get to the point where any emotion and uh, any expression of emotion is experienced as love. It's yes. this one meta emotion as love. You can spend your life in that bliss and love while you're going through life and having all these different problems in life. Yeah. You, the entire time, you're freaking high. The entire yeah. time, you're high. That's why gurus, they don't need any... They don't need... That, there's another thing that they want to talk about. That, um, that people may be interested in the fact that you can train your mind to be high all the time. You know, and that's yeah. essentially the point of life. <laughs> because like if you look at the, all these gurus, they're high all the time. You can look in the eyes and say, well, this guy is out, <laughs> you know, and they, they might, they may be like because their body becomes so interchangeable, like becomes such a, uh, I can disconnect and connect back like so quickly to it. Yeah. That you are pretty much, you can see it in the eyes that they're super high. Because it's just no nonsense. It's a complete human being who is yeah. so aligned with their soul purpose. Yeah, yeah. And you're interacting with a boss yeah. in the game, like a good boss. Yeah. Like he's basically channeling God right there for you. Right. Yeah. You know, and, and yes. that for some people is a very amazing experience, healing experience. Right. They also allow themselves to feel that. And that's a little bit of like how hypnosis works. Right. You can allow someone else to go in there and reprogram mm -hmm. by communicating good thoughts, good beliefs. Right. And if you allow it to come in and, and you know, the person is suggesting the stuff, then now you're restructuring your ego, surrendering to that force. You have, right. you know, confidence and faith mm -hmm. that what's coming in is good. You can reprogram yourself that way too. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to do it alone. You could have a guiding system. Right. You know, and that's yeah. what hypnosis is. Yeah, that's what <laughs> hypnosis is. And that's what you've been and, working on. Yeah, and uh, hyp hypnosis and lucid dreaming and out-of-body experience, they're all connected. They're all very closely connected. It's yeah. all about moving that state of consciousness that is nothing to do with your, your ego structure and your, your body. Nothing to do with your body. It's all like soul. You move it's to that. Soul. Yeah. You move to that point of consciousness and from there the journey begins okay so we said ego is not such a bad thing why is it a good thing it's it's like a navigating system right right it, it allows you to receive some feedback mm -hmm. to feel the vibrations right right of anger sadness joy mm -hmm. and allow you to see where you're where you are on the path it's the structure of how the the frequency flows how the emotions flow the colors that pop up that are associated with those emotions and it allows you to see it but it's up to you to connect with your intuition and feel what that is so that you can reprogram yourself so if there's ego there it means there's a lesson to be learned mm -hmm. it's showing you you know it's showing you the nasty side of you yes the inflated intellectual part of you the arrogant part eventually it gets you into problems and that why ego is not bad. It's your navigating system. Exactly. So we're not supposed to be mad at ego. No. It was just at uh, our, you know, navigating soul that <laughs> doesn't know how to use this body. Right. But it's, I mean, it's up to you though. Yeah. You're not a victim. You can oh, change. Oh, that's what it is. You have like a soul trying out this new body, but doesn't know how to control it yet. Yes. And we've been... Uh, it's difficult to do that because we've been programmed too to yeah. believe, you know, in certain rules and society in different countries too. They have different ways of governing. Right. But every society has a collective conscious, like you said, doesn't want to let go of that ego structure. It wants to survive too. Yeah. 
So, but once we break out of that, then we start evolving and then the soul now can continue to flow. So the only way you can change yourself is through meditation. There's many ways to do it, but you can do it purely with meditation. Well, uh, and that is all that's I mean needed. meditative state. Let's just say anything that gets you to that point right. of uh, awareness of your soul, so yeah. to speak. Whenever, whatever gets you to the zero point consciousness, what is you know, whatever you, how you call it, is the first thing to do. I think that's the first step to knowing and having and belief. the only way to change yourself. <laughs> right, An ego cannot reprogram itself. No, it's up to you. Right. Yeah. It's like how we talked about like shooting a basketball. If I give you a basketball, you never seen basketball before. Never seen an athlete shoot it. You never seen me shoot it. You don't know what it is. There's just a hoop and a basketball. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, the ball has to go into the hoop. And you're trying to shoot it in the many different ways. You know, you don't know how to shoot. <laughs> and and until the ball goes in, you know, there's a particular feeling, uh, a good way of like arranging yourself. Right. So that to increase the probability of that ball mm -hmm. going in more and more times. Absolutely. And once you get that feeling, okay, this is the muscle memory. This is how it works. It makes me feel good. I feel connected with it. Right. Then, okay, you know, some information is pouring in there. Yeah. And when you have that connectedness to the intuition, mm -hmm. that's where you, now you're in touch with your desire. Right. With your soul's path, your soul's journey. So I like what you said there. Like the, once we get out of this, what we think as this body, then we can reprogram ourselves until it becomes uh, just a feeling yeah. from knowing to feeling to being. Yes. There's three steps of that reprogramming process. From knowing to, or from I think knowing maybe. from feeling to being, because like you just mentioned, eventually you start being, it's just the feel. Yes. Right? Eventually it becomes a feel. So you know, when is happening, what's happening, you know, a lot of information about it and you know, like how that feel is. And the feel may be of the very complex, organization of my muscles that could be a feel do you see how feel contains all that data yes yeah <laughs> you see so now yes. that is there's what we a call a feel yeah that's what we call a feel it contains all that data so now it go if we go level up from feeling there's another level which is being the being level is when you don't need to even need to be aware that there's that feeling. It just happens. It just happens. Yeah. Just happens. <clears throat> so this is sort of like how the, there's like a three steps in in, in uh, evolution in each game. Like you will need to do that each game. Each game, yeah. Yeah. And you do it constantly in each yeah. game. Yeah. And even if you're a guru, you still do it. Yeah. Because there's still lessons to be learned. Yeah. You know, and it's fun to do it too to access the non-physical realm, to just have the information pouring in you. And yeah, I mean, that's why gurus are, are so zen all the time. They just have that feeling of, of how they can access that, how to let go and relax and be in that state very quickly. Just like yeah. how Tom does it. At first you need a method, you need yeah. a purpose, you need to engage, you need to have a method, you need to relax, you need to take five minutes, and then you can start uh, visualizing at first. And then later on, maybe you can start feeling and popping out of your body, having lucid dreams while you're conscious. Yeah. But eventually, if you get so good at it, and this is you know what Thomas has been doing and sharing with people in his books, is that you can just consciously pop out and just access the non-physical in a matter of minutes, or it could right. be seconds, just depending on your feel, yeah. so your, your purpose. Before, when I said 10 minutes, I actually made it so it's... Um, that sounds believable. They actually, uh, what sounds unbelievable that you can get there in seconds. Yeah, that sounds a bit <laughs> sounds a bit <coughs> crazy, right? That, Even that for a guru. I can get that somebody <laughs> can get to the point of uh, where they are in their soul and doing whatever they need to be doing mm -hmm. in matter of seconds. Maybe if you're a shaman in a cave for like thirty days, and and how about those who can live in multiple worlds at the same time? Oh. <laughs> about those, <laughs> those that's, the, that's that's level high, highest level guru right there that's pretty high level yeah yeah so how strange is that that a kid growing up in this day and age should be aspiring to that as an end game 
should be should be yeah but because you know we have these belief systems and culture around us yeah it's not what we're doing no. and it seems risky and people have a lot of fear to do it yeah like in the beginning i had fear you know to just drop whatever i was doing but actually i mean i should have fear but there was none of that emotion right there was none of that feeling everything felt good you know i'm going into something new and it's aligned with my purpose mm -hmm. i'm going on this journey and i'm like all for it i'm i'm welcoming whatever's to come and and there's no fear associated with that but yeah. the culture has taught you that you need to have fear that it has to be difficult well tell us about how you face your fears to get to this point so that basically you just told us that you are you have leveled up in the game yeah. which game are you playing right now first of all i think i'm playing multiple games I think I'm playing. Yeah, yes, uh, of course. You're playing. We're all always playing. Yeah, you know, multiple like for example, games. no matter what, which level you are, you still carry. I mean, you still need to worry about not dying. Yeah. And so the game of survival <laughs> is still always a fact. Yeah. Even though you just don't worry about it anymore because, like, you, you know, you're just playing different games. But you, but you just perhaps eat, perhaps exercise, perhaps right. do all these kind of things, you which is still in level one game. It's like you said, you need. But to those take are not challenging your... anymore because you don't live in somewhere you know, in ten thousand years <laughs> in hunting mammoths. Like it's not challenging to get that. You see, but level one is still being played. Yeah, I totally level get it. Level one is still so, being played. So my question is, uh, is which game, which is the, the, the furthest one that you are playing? Well, I think uh, we've been playing level six and seven, right? But I'm still playing level, level four. Level I'm six. What about self-expression? I'm still playing that one too. Yeah, I think self-expression... Yeah, uh, I think which, when you is, which is what we're doing now. This is self-expression. I think we're when still you become, playing level five game. Yeah, when you become conscious that it's a game and that there's a map now and there's a map for you, uh, there's many areas that you can play in the game, many aspects to it. Yeah, It's not necessarily, or maybe it's not bouncing around, but you're playing it at the same time. Right. Right? So I think I'm playing many levels. That's part of my game. You know, in this reality, so those yeah, levels, but, but like, those how can you play a level seven game um, at this point? That you, um, like, you, you, you are, for example, we right now we're playing level five. Later, if we go meditate, that's going to be level six, right? Right, depending what kind of experience we're having over there. But you, we can play level seven until we master level six. Yeah, we cannot play. I think we. And we what is level taste. seven again? Level seven is basically being with God. You're being with God. Okay, so that's level yeah, I'm seven. Not level seven. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not level seven. Uh, but I've been to level seven. Yeah, I've been to level seven in moments, but I'm not level seven. I'm not there all the time. I've right. just visited level seven. It's pretty cool level. <laughs> it's a pretty cool level. It's pretty cool level. <laughs> that's where you go when you die too. <laughs> that's where you go and when you I die too. I don't want to line yeah. up for that just yet. <laughs> yeah, but like, uh, that's pretty much when you're done with most. Uh, you had to do in this life essentially yeah that's uh, you just become love a lot of old people when their partner passes away they feel accomplished fulfilled you know they have nothing else in life to give mm -hmm. and there's a surrender there too it's a beautiful surrender it's not like you know they just gave up on life right they just cho chose to relax surrender and go on their own terms that's yeah. why some people they want to go and you know, <clears throat> when they're in their home, they want to go back to where they live. They've accomplished everything in life. They've done everything life has to offer. Or they want to do something that they always wanted to do to just experience the, the last, you know, joy. Mm -hmm. But at that point, if you're in that situation, you're completely comfortable, you know, with death at that point. Yeah. There's no fear of death. Yeah. And the Egyptians, too, they prepared you for death to be okay with it. Right. natural process of life yeah some say that meditation is a preparation for death <clears throat> what do you think about that <laughs> <laughs> well those are egyptians <laughs> yeah because uh i don't think it's about that i mean look <laughs> it can be for a lot of things the meditation imagine, is not for that imagine like if with meditation you can get to the point you where you can experience anything you want anything you want and uh, just as vivid and clear as here. Meditation can prepare you for ego. Death. So no, no, just think about that realization that meditation gets you to the point where you can experience anything you want as clear, as vivid as we are here right now. Mm -hmm. Think about what that, like, 
how that changes someone's mind realizing that I can experience anything I want. <laughs> right? So how you, how much would you relax and not push yourself in this physical a lot, life? But a lot more. You know, you can't just like feed the information to someone sometimes because this is, uh, you know, why people have friends or family members and they're giving all the advice or people go to a therapist and it's just not working for me and I'm paying all this money. I'm supposed to be getting this help. I'm supposed to be saving my marriage. And the downloads that the therapist is giving you or your friends, the suggestions, the advice is just not, you're just not taking it. Mm -hmm. And why is that? Is because you you are not allowing that information to flow. Mm -hmm. There's still that ego structure, that hard barrier, and you need to dismantle it to feel and actually imagine and you know create in your mind that environment where where now you want to live that life that that friend is giving you the advice to live live your life this way why are you still in this situation in this scenario you know this is what therapists do and yeah. they try to help their partners right uh, marriage couples in that way but until that person allows themselves to go there to imagine that situation and just relax then they can see if that is in alignment with their soul's purpose or not. Basically, they can get the answers within. They get the answers uh, within. It, and it, by breaking the ego, they feel. They they feel what is the right thing for them to do. What yeah. they're you know a, a lot a lot of things. Yeah, and that's, and you know, so you can't just drill it on people. They have to also accept it, and yeah. you should stop drilling it on people sometimes. Yeah, if yeah. they don't want to, you know, accept the advice or yeah, you know. And we should not be upset about that too. Oh, this person is yeah. not listening to me. Yeah, I think uh, that's all going to be natural. I think uh, like all these, like look, if we are looking at this game of life and this earth, it's a simulation game, right? So of course there's going to be some people who are playing one level or the other. Like when you look at everybody, they're playing different games, different levels. Yeah. And then some of them are going to be a little bit more popular. Like you say, the level three is pretty popular because it's money, power, status. So that's why, that's why Instagram, that's why everything is so popular. Because it's just like, oh, it's, I can communicate those <laughs> features. Yeah, it's so, a level three. Yeah, it's a level three game. Social aspect and it's fun because you can right. share it with people. Hey, look at this game I'm playing. I'm so right. good at it. Yeah, exactly. Having so much fun. Exactly. So much joy. And that's why even they, they fake these... Uh, um, <laughs> uh, but I think we would call it virtual signaling or something like that. Where <laughs> virtual signaling. Yeah, where where you obviously not being genuine, like you do an ad with lots For of women in yeah. the background, like you know, bare naked ass woman, <laughs> <laughs> and there's nothing to do with what you are, uh, what your course is about. Advertising. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's that's again that's, that's manipulation. Yeah, it's just <laughs> getting lost in the game itself, like not really knowing. <laughs> but isn't that so funny that other people can do that and you allow yourself because you're so hardwired to yeah. play that game yeah. that you allow other people to motivate you enough. So anyway, let's just finish the <laughs> tangent. My point was is that there's going to be people playing all different levels and you got to be okay with that. You got to be okay with that. Yeah. And it's okay. And that's why it's not like, oh, you have to they have to wake up and all. No, 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 they don't have no, to. No. <laughs> they, they still play playing the other game and they like to. And you don't, you know, don't try don't try to move them from console to console. They still like the other one. Right. Just let them play. They're still gaining mastery on the game and yeah. it's fun for them. Yeah. So let them play. They can be conscious and about their ego structure where that's navigating them to and they'll know, you know, what what console they want to play yeah they have a exact same navigating system that 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 we do so what's who are we to say that they <laughs> yeah. they should do something yeah yeah exactly but there is that guidance aspect of it but but obviously someone who wants to be guided needs to surrender to it right and that's yeah. what hypnosis is that's what the you hypnosis need to be is. open to suggestion and that is basically letting someone else take uh, over your control panel as you say yeah and just uh, typing in the commands you know right imagine yourself a uh, very like cliche one is imagine that's what yourself the gurus at, are at the also <laughs> sorry sorry say it again that's a super cliche one is like imagine yourself at the beach and you're like typing yeah. the command you know into the person <laughs> it's like oh i can imagine it because there's so many commercials about it right and you right. have the corona with the lime in the hand yeah 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 <laughs> but you can actually 
you know like type the commands yeah if you want to call them commands if if that's if okay with you in your reality but you know, for that you have to surrender that's what it is like you, you open your mind you surrender your whatever mind. you want to talk however you want to call it yeah self programming and yeah. you can do that yourself or someone else can do that to you right but they cannot do it to you unless you completely surrender your ego you dismantle that you allow yourself to feel and be in that moment yeah and that's where you can experience and feel vibrations in your body and that's that's, that's how we help uh people to level up who want to level up by being high level gamer <laughs> yeah higher level <laughs> gamers can help the lower level gamers to level up yes yes yeah we we can do that yeah and i think that is like the art of hypnosis yeah. but it's not known as that no it's not known you know so no and that's a pretty cool game to play too <laughs> it is a pretty cool game to play it's knowing the fact that um how our consciousness work that i cannot change myself unless through that method and hypnosis is one of them you know that that opens this realization that okay i can change myself if even if I want. now the question is do i want to change mm. and if i and then start practicing stuff like hypnosis meditation um conditioning you know all visualization daily and stuff like that when you start doing that you it it, it works yeah let's talk about pacifying your fears for a little bit all right i feel like my generation is like pacifying a lot mm -hmm. not only fears but physiological emotion right with uh, weed now which is legal uh -huh. and they're pacifying you know their emotion with that mm -hmm. or just drowning themselves and nothing to do and they get stuck in a rut because it feels good they like the feeling in the body you know and uh but there's no desire because they're not in touch with with their soul desire so yeah. let's talk about pacifying and and like the balance between that like how do you have balance with with taking substances and enjoying that yeah great great question sir uh my answer to that is that it's neither or situation i know that some people will say like oh don't need to use that you just use meditation right and then some people say that don't you don't need meditation just use you know that. yeah just keep smoking man <laughs> it's like in meditation bro you know? <laughs> so so we have these different different schools of thought. The answer is both. That's mm -hmm. how you hack it. That's how the Zen Buddhism always say it balance, balance. Pick something in the middle and you have the least path of least resistance. Yes. So you pick something in the middle. And then you find out that yes, it could take you a long time to get to these meditative states. But if you if you smoke a little bit, if you have a high quality indica you, and you you know, uh, smoke or vape a little bit and then you go meditate you sink into that meditation so much easier, so much faster, and then you even get to experience what that feels like. So now you know what that feels like, and then you can try to reproduce it yourself right. without the, uh, you know, Mary yeah. JJ, and you are then more successful. So it it feeds on it on itself basically. What I'm trying to say is that it helps. It's it's symbiosis. Yes, it helps symbiosis. each other. But if you do one or the other, it's not going to be. But if you balance it out. I would say, uh, you, you know, you may not, you may want to smoke just uh, a couple of days a week and meditate the rest of the time. And if ideally, if you, if you can smoke and meditate and you get to that state that, that, you know, blissful state and joy like that naturally, then that's it. That's, the, that's pretty much how you do it. You know? Right. But the point is, the, it's not to, to smoke and be high. Smoke is just to help you to train your, your mind of how to get there yourself. Right. And, and, and then you can get there yourself without the smoke, and then that's it. Right. Look like when we were meditating, right, for three hours a day. For five days and oh. did you didn't you feel like you're high all the time? We were laughing most of the time. Yeah, it felt like we were high all the time, laughing most of the yeah. time, coming up with all sorts of crazy ideas. Crazy ideas. And it's just like being high. It's just like being high. It's just like being high. And uh, right now, like my generation, or may maybe many generations, because we just became legal. Yeah, I think people are having, uh, you know, trying to cope with a lot of anxiety like depression and yeah. pacifying that with weed. A lot of the times you run into panic attacks. 
right. you know, and then like you don't know what to take anymore. So you fall back to medication, but yeah. the medication is not going to help you. No, the weed's not going to help you because you need to do the inner work. Yeah. You cannot pacify the anxiety. You have to face the anxiety. Yeah, exactly. And that can be difficult to face. But first, you need to dismantle your ego, relax a little bit. And that's why meditation helps because yeah. it allows you to get there. Yeah. And you're not doing it alone with just a substance. You are doing the work. It's not the, the weed that's making you feel good. Right. It can make you feel nasty too and bad. If yeah, you it's only a it. tool. It's 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 really just a tool. Yeah. But it's a tool to improve yourself. It's not a tool to pacify you. It's not the tool to pacify you. Yeah. A lot of people, they just don't know. Yeah. You know, it can be difficult to to understand too. But hopefully, we can like change some people's perspectives. And yeah. I have been uh, you use know, it like properly. Essentially, that. like use it for how it's supposed to be. Because like, yeah. okay, if you smoke weed to get high you can be high with meditation. Yeah. First of all, to get that realization and say, okay, so I don't actually need to spend money on my weed. I can get there with my meditation. Right. Okay, and then weed can help me to to become so good at meditation? The answer is yes. It can help you. It can help you. But it's the point is to get good at meditation so you can get high yourself. All the time. Yeah. Consciously, you know, and not only that, but better your, your uh, purpose in life, your desires your relationships, your friendships, your, you know, your profession, your career, how you want to advance in life. It can yeah. help you in all the aspects. And you don't need to be ad addicted to that stuff because it's you who is doing the inner work and you're not really desiring to be smoking weed every day. What you desire from the weed is to be joyful and happy and feel good. Right. And you don't need the weed to feel that. No. You can feel that every day consciously. Yeah. In, in fact, lately for me, it's like sometimes uh, I had better days when I was just meditating. Yeah. And I, it's, it's strange. But now sometimes when I would smoke, it would not necessarily make it better. Because <laughs> I, I was almost like already there. Ah, uh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> you already felt good yeah exactly yeah it just made you feel comfortable where you were in yeah, that case maybe exactly like, like the it doesn't really open any portals anymore <laughs> because portals already open <laughs> yeah you know so there yeah man okay so we got an hour and a half i think we That's talked an hour a lot and of, half? <laughs> yeah it's an hour and a half we had we talked we covered a lot of topics um but basically the message is that we are in the virtual simulation we are playing this video game and if you get to the point of that realization that we are excuse me we're in a, a simulation if you get to that point of realization that we are in a simulation and it is a video game and you start playing as one you begin to have a joy in life you begin to have joy in life yeah you can crush your addictions bad feelings yeah. and emotions yeah. reprogram yourself right and when you realize that that you can reprogram your thoughts your beliefs you feel so much joy it just becomes so much fun so much more new motivation to right. do stuff right and you can change your path. It's always about about perpetual change. And you know that you have tools to do it. That you can have tools. <laughs> you can to, have tools. To, 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 to solve any kind of problem at the current level game that you're playing. Yes. Or even knowing the fact that I will find out what the tools I will need to have in the next level. Right. Knowing that that is the video game and that's how it works. And, and then you can relax. And then you yeah. say, let's just play this game. Let's just play yeah. this game. And the next time you see the person and then you may have like a stressful station and whatnot, you can just be in that character and have that smile on your face like, oh, I'm, I'm playing this, this guy who's annoyed with this thing, you know? <laughs> yes, you can, you can look at it from that perspective right, like, yeah. wow, this is really annoying me right now. But, I, okay, I'm dealing with it. I'm dealing with it. It's going to take me a while. Like, I know I'm going through this process. Yeah. And you can like, if the situation is really difficult to walk away from. Yeah. I mean, uh, just be patient with it, yeah. you know, and, yeah. and recognize what's going on with you at that time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the take home advice is, they, is begin to meditate and uh, n not necessarily begin to meditate, but learn to get to meditative state, to deep meditative state, whichever way it's uh, best for you. Whichever way is best for you. There's many different forms of meditation. But on something that you would not need to depend on. Something you would not need to depend on. No, exactly. You, you it has can to achieve be it natural. 
You can achieve With it through mind. through athletics. You can achieve it through doing homework, listening to music, completely disconnecting, going somewhere in your mind. Right. You can achieve it through meditation, just sitting there. Yeah. Through yoga. Yeah. But what you have to do is engage, engage in that thought that is going through your mind and that puzzle that you're trying to solve and rearrangement that's going on when you're swimming. Yeah. You know, all those thoughts going through your mind, feel the emotion. The feeling is very important to, to understand and decipher the symbols, the, the feeling, the frequency that you're vibrating on mm -hmm. to know like how to navigate. Yeah. Right. So being attached to one specific form of meditation is not necessarily the answer, but engaging when you're already there. And yeah. if you just relax, you know, you just let go yeah. and keep exploring the thought, yeah. you'll get there eventually. Yeah. Well, that's it. <laughs> and this is how you play a game of life, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen. Yeah. And there's more episodes to come too. There's more episodes to come. Yeah. And there's more stuff to come about this i mean now all the content that i will be creating will be creating from the lens of that game yes and i think that's gonna open up a lot of new fun avenues you wrote an article too you should mention that oh yes i wrote an article like if anybody's uh, suffering with depression and then or know I, that somebody's suffering with depression just go onto my website yeah there's audio for the article now if you yeah. want to listen to audio yeah. if you're driving in your car or, you yeah. know, sitting, relaxing, you don't want to read that day. Yeah. But I think it's more than just for people dealing with depression. I think you covered a lot in there, a lot of valuable info. Yeah. How to have desire for life, I see it as that too. Yeah. You know, a lot of good stuff. So check it out. <laughs> All right, man. We're going to wrap this up. All right. All right. Thanks for watching.